There are about a billion delay pedals out there, which is fortunate because delay is one of the best effects for synthesizers. It will make just about any patch better. And while I try to cover some fairly quirky pedals on this channel, sometimes a bread and butter delay is all your sound needs. So the surprise today is not the specs or architecture of the effect, but instead who makes it. Who knew that one of the better delay pedals that I've used on a synthesizer would be made by Ibanez? I'm Donald Jordan for Bloom Music, and this is the Ibanez ES2 Echo Shifter Delay. The Echo Shifter is a pretty straightforward delay, but with a very dark lo-fi character. The expected feedback and mix controls have knobs at the top of the pedal, but Ibanez mixes things up by using a fader for the delay time. At the bottom of the slider range, the delay time is at its shortest, about 25 hertz. At its longest time, you'll get a full second between echoes. The slider is sturdy and heavy, so you don't have to worry about accidentally knocking it out of place, and it has enough resistance that it's easy to make tiny incremental adjustments. The fader is definitely the ES2's most prominent feature, and while it doesn't have any impact on the sound, I preferred it to a knob for delay tweaking, and it just looks really cool. The mix knob sits centered above the delay time slider and unfortunately has a max depth of only 50-50 wet dry. It's an absolute shame that the pedal isn't capable of a completely wet mix, as this pretty much eliminates it from being utilized as a send effect. The feedback knob sits top left. The feedback is pretty restrained. You'll get a single echo at the lowest setting, but you can crank it to the max setting without having to worry about oscillation throughout most of the longer range of the delay time. though it will start to run away when you get into the bottom 25% of the range. If oscillation is what you're after, a switch below the feedback control has you covered. The manual says this increases the internal feedback gain, but I noticed no obvious effect on the character of the delay repeats. It just seems to extend the feedback depth control. Essentially, with the switch off, the feedback control goes from 0 to 50, and with it on, goes from 51 to 100. The oscillation is extreme, and you can get some interesting sounds by jamming on the delay slider with the feedback dimed, though anything you get this way will probably only be useful as an effects type sound. Nothing very musical will come out of it. The switch is noiseless, so you can flick it on and off for momentary bursts of feedback without getting any pops or clicks in your sound. As I stated at the beginning, the delay's character is dark and lo-fi. Interestingly, as you increase the delay time, the repeats become darker and murkier. As
As you reach the top quarter of the delay time range, upper octave notes will barely repeat at all. The majority of the time, I aggressively low pass my delay sends anyways, so it's like this thing was made for me. But if you like bright delays with clarity and articulation in the high frequencies, this is not the effect for you. But I do urge you to come to the dark side. On the right side of the echo shifter are the controls for the modulation. A switch turns the effect on, and then the top right knob controls the mod depth. There is no control for speed, but I found it to be in that Goldilocks zone where it's not too fast and not too slow, and I never found myself missing a speed control. The modulation is a clean sine wave, and the depth range goes from undetectable to drunk, so you should be able to find a setting that satisfies your taste. Finally, the ES2 has a tap tempo. It's a simple two tap process with the length between your first and second tap setting the delay time. The inclusion of a tap is helpful, but there is a major flaw. You cannot use the tap tempo when the effect is bypassed. It will just ignore your taps. This essentially eliminates the effect as a live tool as you can't easily adjust delay time between sections or songs. Ideally, you could bypass the pedal, tap in your new delay time, and then re-engage the effect. Instead, you have to do it while the effect is on and you get this wonky pitch bend effect as the delay adjusts. You can work around this by turning the mix all the way down, then tapping, then turning the mix back up, but that's a cumbersome solution. So studio only for the tap tempo. The effect is mono in and out only, so don't expect any ping pong style sounds here. I must say I'm really impressed with the build of the pedal, especially for the price. It's nice and heavy, and the knob switches and slider all feel very sturdy. And I'm pretty sure these are real wood side panels. Overall, the Echo Shifter will make a quality addition to your effects rig, albeit with a hefty oversized body. So that does it for the controls of the unit. Now let's hear some more examples of its sound before I wrap up.
No, the Echo Shifter isn't a game changer. There are no tricks up its sleeve, but sometimes you don't want tricks, you just need a simple, predictable delay with a good sound. With the fun to use slider control and its characteristic dark murky repeats that seem tailor-made to my taste, the ES2 has become my go-to starting point for bread and butter delay on my synthesizers.